The bounce and throttle are two very similar yet very different techniques to control how many times you allow a function to be executed over time. These techniques are especially important when we are attaching a function to a DOM event like resize or scroll or to an action that a user performs like button presses because we can't control how many times these functions are going to run. Will the user press a button once or will he be in an angry mood and smash it 15 times? Well, we can't know that. But with these two techniques, you are giving yourself an extra layer of control. First, I will show you how these functions work, and after that, we will see them in action and we are going to implement them in two real world React features. Let's start with debounce. This technique allows us to group multiple function calls into a single one. You can imagine this like a bus stopping and waiting until all of the passengers get on the bus one by one. And once no passengers have arrived in the last few seconds, well, the bus will leave. So the bus leaving is the function that we are trying to call. And the passengers getting on the bus are the events that are trying to trigger the function call. So the bounce will wait until no event called him in the last x milliseconds and then he will execute the function. For example, when we are resizing a window, there will be a lot, even hundreds of resize events fired. But we don't want to change the layout hundreds of times, only once, after the user finished resizing the window. With debounce, we can run the change layout function once no resize event was fired at the last, let's say, second. Now, throttle is very similar, but imagine a bus where the bus driver is very rude, and once the bus stops, he will say, OK, I will wait for 5 seconds. Whoever manages to get on can come with me, but the rest has to stay. So Traddle guarantees that a function will be run every x milliseconds. You can think of it as taking a lot of function calls and only executing a portion of them. For example, let's say we want to implement infinite scrolling. The user is scrolling on a page and we want to load more content once he gets to the bottom of the page. If the user is scrolling on a desktop, there are about 30 scroll events fired each second and on mobile this can get even worse, like 100. It can get really expensive even to do a simple task like checking if we are at the bottom of the page, if we have to do it 100 times a second. So, with Traddle, we can limit this and say that if the user is scrolling, I want to check if new content needs to be loaded every 500 milliseconds. Now that we know why we need these functions, let's check out how a debounce function might work under the hood. It will be a function that takes another function as a parameter plus a timeout, which is going to be the amount of time that the function will wait before executing the function. Let's give it a default value of 300. So, we define a timer and we return a function. In the returned function, first of all, we will have to clear the timer. And we will set it equal to a new set timeout. After the timeout ends without interruption, we will call the function with apply, because we still want to access the this keyword in this debounce function. I have prepared a button for us, so I will just grab it real quick. And I will call the function with a parameter, just to make sure that everything works as expected. So now, when we call this debounce function, it will start a timeout. But if we call it again, it will scratch the previous timeout and call another one. So if you would keep clicking the button, nothing would happen. But once we stop, then the function gets called. This works perfectly if, for example, we want to search the query that the user typed in an input field in our database. It would be a huge waste to start a search after every keystroke, so with this, we could wait until the user stopped typing and only search once. The problem is that for button clicks, this isn't the best. If you press a button, the function should be called right away and only skip repeating function calls. We can define another debounce function and change the logic a bit. We return a function that will call the function if the timer is undefined. And on the first call, it will be undefined because we didn't give it a value. After that, we just clear the timer and set it equal to a new timeout which, after the given milliseconds have passed, will set the timer to undefined. Now the function will be called initially without any delay, but it will skip the unnecessary function calls after that. If the user presses a button twice within 500 milliseconds, he probably just double-clicked. 
So even he doesn't want to call the function twice. And we, we really don't want to do it. But if there is a little pause between the two button clicks, the user might want to click the button again. So make sure that the timeout is under one second. So now you can see how the debounce function works. And you can also see that just a small change to the function changes its use case dramatically. Now let's create a throttle function. The actual code will look very similar to this debounce leading function, but the small differences create a completely different behavior. We just copy debounce leading and put this part of the code into this if statement. And I will also change the default timeout to 1000 so we can see a little bit better what's happening. And that's it. We can test it out. And as I keep pressing this button, you can see that the function gets called each second once. So let's go over step by step what's happening. We try to execute our first function call, which will get executed because timer is undefined. Timer will be equal to this set timeout. Now, until the given milliseconds have not passed, this if statement will reject any call to the function because timer is not undefined. But after the limit passed, in our case 1 second or 1000 milliseconds, timer will be undefined again, so we can call the function again and set a new timeout. These examples are functional, but still, I put them here just so you can understand how these functions work internally. If you would want to use these functions in your projects, you should use a library like Lodash. It's well tested and very easy to use and customize. So that's what we are going to do. To get started, I will create a React project. I will just open a new terminal and type in npx create react app and then the name of my app that I want to create. Now that it's installed, I will delete everything that we don't need. So we are left with just the app and the index file. And we can install the Lodash library with npm. Let's open the Lodash documentation and search for debounce. As you can see, we have a third parameter which is called options. Here we can specify max weight, which is the maximum amount that a function will wait before calling the debounce function. And what's more interesting is leading and trailing. I will quickly jump to a standard JavaScript and HTML file, where we can easily test these options out, because there are things that we need to do before we use debounce in React. We will get to them shortly. Let's create a new button and check out what these parameters do. The default of leading is false, and of trailing is true. So if we call the function without any extra parameters, we get this pretty standard debounce behavior, where nothing happens until I keep clicking. But once I release and wait for 1000 milliseconds, then one function call gets executed. Now, let's enable leading. As you can see, now the function call fires without delay, and if I keep pressing really fast, nothing happens. But if I stop, another function call fires. This is because trailing is set to true by default. 
let's set training to false. Now I start pressing the button and the function executes right away. I keep pressing and pressing and nothing happens. And when I stop, again nothing happens. This is probably the best behavior for buttons. But you can customize it really easily. So before you try to use debounce, think it through when would you like to call the function. If you read the documentation, we can see that there is a cancel and a flush method, which you could call on this function that the debounce returns. We could cancel the function while it's in the waiting phase, or we could call it immediately with flush. We won't do it in this tutorial, but I'm sure that after you are done watching, you will be able to use them if you have to. So let's jump back to React. I have renamed our app file to debound search and I have installed three extra libraries, Axios, React Bootstrap and Cities List. If you want to follow along, you can also install them. And I have imported some CSS from Bootstrap. I will add some basic styling to our index file. Now I will jump to our debound search component and I will run npm start just to check that our setup is working. And as you can see, it is. I will import our React hooks, specifically use effect, use state and use memo, plus cities from cities list, which as its name suggests is a giant list of cities. We console.log it and well, it's not a list, it's an object. So we will have to turn it into a list with object.keys. And we will be responsible and use the use memo hook. So we don't call object.keys on that huge object on each re-render, just once at the initial one. I will change the title and I will add an input field. It's going to be a React input field, so I will use useState and call it filter value and set filter value. And the value of the input field will be filter value. And on change I will set filter value to event.target.value. And as you can see, now I can write in the input field. Now, when filter value changes, I will want to filter out the cities that match the query that we have written to the input field. So I use useEffect and pass it filter value. The function inside useEffect will run each time filter value changes. I will just console.log some stuff. And as you can see, everything works. Now let's create our filter function. I will import to lowercase from lodash, which will set each character of a string to lowercase. And I will create a function called dosMatch, which will take two strings as parameter, convert both of them to lowercase and check if the first one contains the second one. So it just returns a boolean. And I will create a filter function that will return a list of all the elements from the cities array that return true when given to the dosMatch function with the filter value. I will also create a new state called filter result. And I will create a new function in our use effect, which if the filter value is an empty string, will set the filter result to an empty array. Else, it will set the filter result equal to the result of running our filter function with the city array and the current filter value. And I will also call this function so it actually runs. Let me just console.log filter value so we can see what's happening. And check it out. As you can see, we are filtering on every keystroke, which is not good. And it only works because we are not actually displaying the results yet. I will just map over each element in the filter result and display it. And actually I will wrap it in a p tag. Ok, ready? Now I will just press A and L. And it's frozen. I will close it before my recording stops. And as you can see, this is just screaming for some debounce. So I will import it. The debounce function will take a parameter, the filter value. And we will copy this stuff from our use effect and just paste it. Now let's try to use this debounce function in our use effect. Okay, 
For now, I will comment out the filtering and just console.log when the function runs. And as you can see, something is not working. Well, first of all, I forgot to give a timer to debounce. But there is another problem. When React re-renders the component, this whole code will run again. Except, of course, the code that's inside our use effect. So in each re-render, we also run the code which creates a new debounce function. So each time we call it, it's actually a completely different debounce function. This is the hardest part of the whole feature, so don't worry if it doesn't make sense at the moment. We have to make sure that we use the same debounce function even after the component re-renders. We can use useMemo, which will cache our debounce function, so even if we re-render, we will call the same function. And I tried to run it, but as I said, I forgot to give a second parameter to the debounce function, so you can see me panicking. But I realized it eventually. And now I start typing, and I stop, and the function runs after a second. And now I uncomment my filter function and delete the console.log. And I also added the ptext badly at the start, so I will change them. Now I start to write, and as you can see, everything just works. My laptop is not freezing, we get our search results. So congratulations to us, it turned out exactly as we wanted. At the beginning, I said that we will implement two features, but the video is already taking longer than I wanted, so I will split it into two parts. Thank you so so much for watching, I hope you learned a lot. Don't forget to press the like button and subscribe so you can keep improving your JavaScript skills. See you next time, bye!